I'm so good. How are you? I didn't, I wasn't ready for my close up this morning. It's quite close, but that's okay. I'm so glad to Thank finally catch so up. I love so what you guys much. are doing. Thank you so love much. It. And I'm so glad we had a chance to yeah. reschedule. I know there was a lot of stuff going on before. And so before we start, yes. uh, if you could just introduce you. yourself and share where you are, what you do. Sure. You the, so look, you gotta wear the swag. <laughs> You got to wear your own flag when you got it or when you paid for it, right? Um, okay, so my name is Nikki Bruce. I am the current owner of the Center Yoga Collective, but I'm only there as a space holder. So my beloved, beautiful teacher friend created the center for 17 years and ran it and kept it open during the pandemic, kept a place for us all to still have a home. Um, so I know we're limited on IG live, but there's a long story behind if you want to hear more of it. But um, things shifted. The time was right. My old career crashed and burned in a bloody fiery mess. And it was all beautifully perfect because here I am. And we're not a homeless Kula anymore. Like we still have our home. We just added a sauna. I just want to bring health happiness, wellness. Wow. There's a lot us. to unpack there. And I, I love this story. So 17 years <laughs> in the same location. Is that correct? So she had one. So I, I'll try to give it short nutshell version, but I would love to just like hang out with right. you on FaceTime and chat because I've been watching your past interviews and I love interviewing people. So it's just fun. Um, she started at in our little town of Harrisonburg called the mm -hmm. Friendly City in the Kiesel building, which is like now it's a bunch of apartments has gone through many iterations, as yeah. you were saying, just like the ice house. Um, I have friends that come to see the studio and they're like, I used to skate this when it was what? just an empty yeah. ice house with yeah. nothing. And now it's pretty cool. Like we have second floors kind mm -hmm. of um, ice house studios where we have a personal trainer. Elisa Laughlin is in there with her personal training, huge private wow. gym tucked back into the corner. Um, so she yeah. started in tiny little Kieseltown loft apartment. She tells stories about, um, and I wasn't around for that. I yeah. moved from downtown Atlanta in 2007. Um, so she says you would walk up the stairs and like people would be like passed out with their beer bottles or whatever. And she'd be like, excuse me, <laughs> trying to come in and teach a yoga class. So God yeah. love her, you know, like she started there. And then the next iteration was a little basement below what is an office building. We used to always laugh and say, what are they doing up there? Like chair Olympics? Like, I don't understand why they're rolling around on the floor so much, but beautiful space. Funnily enough, like the people that I went through yoga teacher training with, with Suzanne Perrine, the, own, the, the creator of the center, um, we had crossed paths in those old studios a long time ago and just never knew. So the ties that, that kind of bind our yeah. community together are really and, sweet and I love and this strong. too because, you know, it also points to the fact that you can do yoga anywhere. I mean, and I think the pandemic really sort of drove that point home for us, but like, you don't have to be, it's great to be in a beautiful studio. That's a wonderful experience, but you could do it in an office space on your, in your living room, you know, in a former, uh, ice bagging factory or what, what the ice house is in yeah. your home in our home studios where we you know did yeah. it from home when we went online like it's been pretty cool to lay, uh, level the playing field but there's still so much work we have to do to make it accessible we have something called the love project that suzanne also started to have this go out into places where people mm. aren't privileged enough to go to a yoga studio, mm. are nervous about walking into a yoga studio where there's almost a force field at the door because right. everyone seems to know what they're doing mm. and they're of a certain body type and they, you know, it's intimidating. So yeah. I have a lot of work to do to get it out there and get it the mm. way I want it. But for right now on mm. day 14, 13 yeah. of the third month yeah. of this year, we're still and there. So that's, that's my amazing. goal for right so now. So <laughs> you mentioned that you had a previous career. Can I ask what was your previous career? Because I'm always so curious how people sort of transitioned into this space. Yes. So here, mm -hmm. I, this being is the Venn diagram mm -hmm. intersection between mental health and yoga and wellness. So I, I've survived oh, wow. a career in social work yeah. um, by the skin of my teeth but really hit a glow up when I came out of that. So my job now is to help myself care for myself and help my community care for themselves. So 
wow. social worker for over a decade um, and mm -hmm. varying roles and varying uh, layers of uh, yeah. toxic yeah. trauma. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, then I'm yeah. still working through, but aren't we all, right? So now I get to mm -hmm. help others kind of walk through that. Mm -hmm. And what's really cool, a little side note also, is the classes that I teach my regular students, many of them also quit their wow. jobs in the same time period. Yeah. It was really hilarious. Like this community, clearly yeah. you can tell means everything to me. So it's been really cool yeah. to kind of walk that with them, you know, and get some freedom and feel um, yeah. um, a different life. What was the on, thing? You know? I imagine that's a, a, a challenging transition, no matter what, even if you're doing something that you really love. And I always ask this because I'm also curious from a selfish standpoint, how do you get through things like that, which are like, this is more challenging than I ever anticipated. What is the thing that you go to first in terms of, you know, is it a mantra? Is it a person? Is it a friend? How, what is the first thing you do to try to get through that moment where you're like, I don't think I can make it right now? Yeah. That is a yeah. heavy loaded question. It's a much, question. It's a loaded question. <laughs> <laughs> Let me question. With the time change on top. <laughs> mm. Yeah, which, you know, I'm fine with all of that. That is a heavy question. And I will say I can't fully answer fully from the yeah. other side because I'm halfway still in it. I'm, I'm kind of um, yeah. jumping the fence here and there sometimes. Um, but I will say that that and I am a crier. So if you're a sympathetic crier, just get a tissue because I just water all the time. So um, I will say that the first yeah. place that I went. Bring it, bring it, it. love it. <laughs> was the studio it was yeah. the only thing that got me through and it wasn't the physical place because our studio any studio right. as you know is not about the four walls it's about the people in it so yeah. that's what got me through truly and that's why i'm here because this community means so much to me so i moved from atlanta in 2007 mm -hmm. to a tiny little town here in harrisonburg called elkin yeah it's yeah. outside of Harrisonburg. It's a tiny little <laughs> dot. There's, I think there's two traffic lights. Still, yeah. Which I love. Now I own a home outside of Elkton, yeah. but um, it was rough. It was really rough moving, not having a community. And I just think that that's life changing. Like once I found it. Yeah. I found I, and thank goodness, I, didn't want to and I think it. that that's what keeps a lot of people in this practice and in this, is the community, you know, and it really, it, it ties us together and it keeps us moving forward. And, and I, I think anyone that's taken a yoga class and keeps taking them probably can attest to that fact. Do you remember, do you remember your first I would class? Agree. Do you remember like what your reaction to it was? Because I know mine was not like, this is my life. Like, I definitely did not have an instant love relationship <laughs> no. with it. So what was your first yoga no. class like? Yeah. I love asking people that question too. Um, so my first experience was at mm. the tender age of 19 oh. in an Iyengar studio. Um, in, in down, mm. It wasn't downtown Atlanta. It was like midtown, I think. Yeah. Um, Sweetwater. It's still there. Um, mm -hmm. Steve was the name of my teacher. He has no idea who I am, but he was my first teacher. And of course you always have a soft spot, right? So, and what else is hilarious is when you look back on your practice, when you wore a younger <laughs> woman's yoga pants yeah. <laughs> and body, um, mm -hmm. and to just look at how things more, you know, it's so funny. Mm -hmm. I'm like, let's do restorative. Like I, you know, I used to love, hot yoga, power yoga, all the things, right? Yeah. And now I'm like, let's do some restore. <laughs> you know, it's just funny um, how much you mm -hmm. change from an Iyengar studio at 19 to, um, yeah. I just want to do Reiki and restorative yeah. all day long. <laughs> you know? But the cool thing is yoga allows for all of that. And don't get mm -hmm. me started, but you know, mm -hmm. yoga asana is only this much. So there's just so much more that we have no idea about here in the West because yeah. we've just bastardized it so much. So there's so much you could keep studying for an entire and how lifetime. Exciting it is and that, never get you know, there. to know that there's just always more that you can explore and more avenues and more areas and more styles of asana. What do you find in your space that you have at the center 
is the most popular class? Because I'm always interested, it seems to be in terms of not just where we are as like a country, you know, in COVID, that was one thing and now, but it's also geographic. I find that people in different states sort of gravitate towards different styles more. What is it at your center that people really are like excited about? That's funny that you, you say that. Yeah. So we, mm -hmm. another nutshell, we also absorbed, there was a Pilates studio in half wow. of our big space. It's oh. huge. It's over 5,000 square feet. So they, Suzanne and the former owner of the Pilates studio, they built it out to suit. So when that Pilates studio went away, when I came on, we kind of absorbed. So now we have yep. bar classes. We're adding TRX classes. We have yoga. We have everything from straight mm -hmm. meditation to power. Um, mm -hmm. and, and what you're asking right. is funny. And it's also, I can't fully answer because I'm yeah. two months and 13 days into this. So <laughs> I know what our studio mm -hmm. likes. We're kind of a soft hearted bunch. We're very heart centered. Um, we tend to mm -hmm. fill yoga and meditation classes the most, but then of course, you know, you have your mm -hmm. power yogis who are diehards who, you know, just cannot mm -hmm. live without it. Our town is very blessed. Also, we have another yoga teacher graduate um from, from our school that started a hot yoga studio down the road so we've got that we've got another um healthy lifestyle center that another friend of mine owns mm -hmm. and runs a friend of mine owns and runs and they do some yoga mixed in right. there too but they're all so different and what's beautiful is yeah. i welcome them in they come to the studio some of them train at the studio i go to their studios when i can um it's really shifted my, my paradigm about mm -hmm. um yeah. Yeah. competition over it's community over competition yeah. and how freaking and how refreshing amazing. you know yeah and how i don't know that that answers your that question it, but. there are so many options now for the community because it's just i, I had a chat with uh, a studio that was near where i went to college at many many years ago and when i went to college many years ago there was one pub in town that was all you could find now there's yoga studios organic food markets and i'm like Thank goodness, you know, I'm so happy to hear that they're all coming up all over the place and there's more than one. Because like you said, you know, they might be offering something that you just don't have at that moment. And it just, it really, the community will respond and they'll want more, hopefully. <laughs> they'll want more of it. Yeah, our community is very well cared for. We just partnered with a local um, smoothie and fresh juice place that's right down the street from us too. So, so many fun things happening. And I know you probably know, like when you first start, there's so much you yeah. want to do to narrow it down. It's just hard, but um, I'm so happy to roll in these other healthy options, like the sauna we just added, like fresh juices. Like, I just know for me, I was running for so many years um, where life is busy. You know, I would drive to the studio from Northern Virginia, mm -hmm. um, just catching my classes in my day. So if I think my goal is always mm -hmm. thinking about myself in that busy role, like, okay, I know my studio is there. I know I can go in, um, get a good class, grab a fresh juice and like, um, mm -hmm. a Lara bar or something mm -hmm. and go about my day mm -hmm. and feel better. And it's one stop you know like that's kind of what i want to offer to people i love when they open the door to hear them say yeah, <sighs> yeah. i love that <laughs> i love that and i've noticed on your website that you and your instagram that you have really interesting offerings you had an art class that you did uh, i think a couple of weeks ago as well so you have all kinds of things that are really yeah. really interesting and i love that you're offering and i love that people are, are just are they're offering it in so many different settings so maybe if meditation isn't your initial draw you might be more creatively inclined and say oh i'll come to this class now so i love that there's this offering for people to to explore that's pretty fun we actually did that mm -hmm. um i led the meta meditation portion of that and it was really cool it was our first one um mm -hmm. but people really get absorbed it's so meditative and it was a watercolor workshop mm -hmm. we have more coming with some different series but we didn't sit mm. and traditionally close our eyes to meditate, right. which you know so many people are terrified of. Um, we just let them continue to be absorbed and I walk them mm -hmm. through some meta practices yeah. while they were totally absorbed in what they were doing. And um, they eventually wrote down their own personal meta phrases for yeah. their work of art. So it was really I cool. Love that. It was really fun. What else is coming up that you're excited about? Yeah. I see there's a lot of retreats coming up. Any other events that you're just so excited about? 
<laughs> oh my gosh, where do I start? I wish I had my calendar in front of me. Um, well, I'm personally excited because I get to go to Costa Rica. Yeah. My um, yeah. teacher friend, Suzanne, is leading one in May. She's going to the Galapagos next year. Um, thankfully, she didn't go anywhere and she's still around and teaching classes and is there for me to call yeah. and be like, please help me. I don't know what I'm doing. I couldn't do it without her. Um, so many retreats. I think she's got another one coming up in Italy. I told her her job yeah. is to teach whatever classes she wants to teach and to lead I mean, who doesn't love her she retreat, right? <laughs> I mean, that's... <laughs> she's... She's amazing, and she's she's able to get back to her true love oh, wow. of Pilates. She's teaching Pilates now for us. Um, so other things coming up, yeah. um, some cool workshops. I feel like I mm -hmm. want to get the word out about Kundalini. Like our, mm -hmm. we need this. We need this ancient technology right now. Yeah. Um, we've got that going on twice a week. We've got workshops galore coming up that are. We had one yesterday called decluttering. Oh, okay. Um, decluttering your life and it was about right. emotional and right. space decluttering for spring um, I've got a pop-up one that I haven't really announced yet but spring equinox celebrations will oh, wow. come on Sunday the 19th um, I have yeah. a, a little background in Kundalini as well and we really try yeah. to mark these big moments um, because as we know as Kundalini yogis say when you practice on these power days yeah, you know, you're amplifying your practice. So we're trying to lean into those sort of natural yeah. um, celebration days, the lunar celebration days, the solar celebration days, um, looking at yoga teacher trainings to come. And we have a lot of really, really amazing educators yeah. in our area that are doing it at their studios that we're inviting to do at our studio. Mm -hmm. We're looking at more inclusive training. We're looking at partnering with, I didn't yeah. even get started. So on our same floor, uh, there's mm -hmm. something called Friendly City Safe Space. It's our um, Harrisonburg safe space for um, yeah. LGBTQIA plus individuals. Wow. They have a clothing yeah. closet, free. Yeah. They have so many resources. So the social previous social worker in me sees what they're doing, and I'm just so blown away. So looking to try to partner with them, make our safe a more our space a more safe yeah. pace, safe space. Um, <laughs> practice our pronouns yeah. more, you know, just try to be better humans together. We also yeah. have something called the Colin Center on our same floor that offers mm -hmm. um, family and individual services to um, wow. families with domestic abuse, victims of sexual assault or trafficking. I was like, going to say, it's a the heavy building floor. like it's a supercharged <laughs> vortex. It's just, you've got a lot of good energy and a lot of energy <laughs> happening in that building. I'm glad that you said that because I'm like, these people have no idea what, what they're yeah. experiencing coming outward of our studio. Like, you know, everyone on the floor is above and below is benefiting from all of these meditation well, they sessions because that we hold Because you mentioned there. they walk in so and they it's, go, ah, so it's that collective energy that's been going into the walls <laughs> and into the, you know, the floor space and they're just absorbing it when they, listen to me. <laughs> Yeah. It's true. Like I think about that, but I'm like, how you can't, you can't, I'm not going to like make an <laughs> ad that says they're going to benefit from our meditation yeah. field. They know. But the people that yeah. come, they know so and you, they do. You mentioned yeah. Suzanne quite a bit. And, and I'm curious if someone said to you, Hey, I'm interested in maybe starting a yoga studio, you know, what would your advice be to that person? I mean, it sounds like you were very lucky and had a, a strong mentor, which I, I always say that's the number one thing. If you have a mentor, great. So what would your advice to that person be if they were like, what should I do? How do I start? <laughs> I can't even answer that. I can't yeah. even answer that because I'm just trying to figure out how to start. And honestly, you know, people are like, oh, that's so fantastic. And I'm like, mm. all I did was step in. Like, Suzanne's the one that built it all like she brought that from other studios and had mm -hmm. that space built out to suit and we have two massage rooms one has a sauna one has a massage and reiki room mm -hmm. one is a bar room one is just a fitness room so mm -hmm. she's the one that designed all of that we also have a private rooftop patio Beautiful. that we like to do yoga on like we're like the yeah. best kept secret in Harrisonburg I'm telling you it's huge and there's something for everyone. And we just did a girls right. night there the other night because we can and I can cater from the many restaurants in our yeah. building. Like yeah. it's just a good So space. it sounds like That's then it. the best advice would be to have some 
to do to do it. I mean, do it. it sounds like you. I, I feel like I, I hear this a lot when I talk to people that own spaces and studio centers. It, it's almost like it's a thing you you can't not do. You're just so drawn to it that you know in your heart, you, there's almost no there, choice in a good there's way. No choice like, in a good way. There's no choice. Like, and I love. Yeah. 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 People yeah. hear that and they get scared of that. But once you're kind of once you've stepped out there in faith. Yeah. You just keep going. Like there's really, I, there's no choice. I mean, I remember speaking to Suzanne in the parking lot one day after a class of hers. And I knew, like I talked to her very openly about every time she had to sign the lease again, especially during COVID, I would know it was coming up and I would be like, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. Oh God. <laughs> um, so I remember talking to her in the parking lot one day, just a few short months ago and saying, do we need to start looking for another space? And by we, I mean me. Like, I can't have this space. I can't ha right. have the people, right. the Kula, the Hart family, right. not have a home. So, so here we are. We were looking at another space, but the center, we, don't, we didn't have to move. We ended up just coming in. My partner, Elisa, really wow. helped a lot, building out a private gym in the back and, like, committing to that with me and – showing up for yeah. all the ways that I show up day to day. She's really solid. We're yeah. a very unique pair. It's really been fun. Lots of learning. I would love to do yeah. this in a year and maybe I can answer your question. But I think better. it's important to know that, you know, sometimes you don't have all the answers, but you you still you still do it no matter what. And I, I feel like this applies to everything in life. I mean I as I get older I look back and I go, oh okay, yeah, I see that now. But when you're going through it and it seems scary and, and very unknown you know, just doing it, taking that step and, you know, holding your breath maybe a little bit and just taking that leap of faith. And I, thank goodness that you did, because now your community still has a space to go to and a place for you to go to as well, you know? So, you know, you've built your community for yourself and thank you so much for the work that you do. I mean, I'm always so, I'm oh my so gosh. Uh, it's touched my pleasure. And, inspired and impressed <laughs> with people that just, go for their dreams and do them and then serve the community at the same time. So thank you for doing this. And thank you for supporting us too. So we are a small business as well. And we <laughs> only exist because of studio partners like you. So thank you for helping us build our dream as well. And um, keep trying to keep people healthy and happy. I guess that's what we're all trying to do, right? <laughs> that's really all we want. That is. And the message that I want to tell people that I bring to a uh, yeah. yoga studio all the time, you can tell, show yeah. up messy, show up anyway, yeah. just, just show up. It's the hardest part. It's the only thing that got me through yeah. was just showing up, just keep, just keeping coming to class. Just, and you know what the real mm. mirror is to keep showing mm. up and yeah. teaching when you're like that. So just do it. We had someone that said when I was still in yoga teacher training years ago, do you think you'll teach when you're done? And I was like, Ooh, right. like I don't, I don't think so. I don't think so. I said, I don't think the world mm. needs another mediocre yoga teacher. And he said, maybe not, but mm. the world does need more yogis. Sh Shane mm. O'Hara said that he doesn't teach with us anymore. And he doesn't know yeah. that I carry that phrase around with me, but I do because no, we don't need more yoga teachers maybe yeah. but we do need more yogis and, and we do our work yeah. no matter what our work is so just do it show up show up messy show up not knowing the answers yeah. lean on your people <laughs> cry it out <laughs> i love it you'll be fine Nikki, thank you so much for joining us today and for sharing your story thank i'm you. gonna put this up on youtube as well so anyone that missed it can catch it there and i'll send you the link and Good luck. This is going to be a great year for you guys. I'm excited to hear. And we'll talk again Thank next you. year and see where you are. All right. I'm going to hold you to it. Like, I want to we'll do, do like a little we do on those home and and shows. We'll check in again and say, how are you doing? <laughs> I would love to. And we can go back and maybe I'll answer your questions a little bit better. But I would love to just chat with you, too. Thank so you so we'll much. Keep in touch and I want to see the doing. space next time. So next time, post it from the actual studio. We'll take a look around. All right. Okay. Yeah, I actually wanted to do that. I didn't know if that was kosher to do. My kid is on spring break, so we figure I'll it out. I'm at home, but um, I would love to show you. I'd love Sounds to show great. you. Have a great day, Nikki. Time. Thank you. Bye.